I've been running the Micro Swiss NG Extruder on two of my Ender 3s for the better part of a year now and have really enjoyed using them. The NG is a pretty unique dual gear direct drive extruder with a 3 to 1 gear ratio and the winner of Proper Printing's Extruder Tug of War. Since its launch, the NG line has expanded to have a front and top mount linear rail version, one for the Ender 6 and another version for Ender 5 style 3D printers. Microsoft reached out with interest in sponsoring an install video for their Ender 5 kit, so that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. In today's video, we will be converting the stock Ender 5 Pro from its Bowden extruder and PTFE lined hot end to the NG direct drive extruder with all metal hot end. Although we're specifically installing this on the Ender 5 Pro, the installation process will be very similar on the standard Ender 5, the Ender 5 Plus, and Ender 5 style clone printers. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before I do any mod or install, the first thing I like to do is take out all of the parts included to get a little bit of familiarity as well as sort of do a head count and make sure that everything is there. So let's first run through what's included with this kit. In the box, we have a bag of spare parts. This just has some set screws, a retention clip, and PTFE coupling. Our reverse Bowden mount, along with the screws and nuts to mount that to where our extruder currently is. Plastic self-tapping screws. These will be used to mount our layer cooling fan and our heatsink fan to the included printed fan shroud. All of our hardware that's going to be used to transfer over our roller wheels from the stock hot end to the Micro Swiss NG body. An extruder extension cable that we'll need since we're moving it from a Bowden to a direct drive extruder. Some zip ties for cable management. Our new all metal hot end. Both the nozzle and the heat brake have been heat tightened to spec at factory, which is a really nice inclusion. And last but not least, the main body of the NG extruder. This already has the custom stepper motor mounted, as well as the new fan shroud that we're going to be using. As far as tools go, I recommend having a set of Allen wrenches, a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, a set of wrenches if you don't have that, an adjustable wrench will be fine, and flush cutters. With that out of the way, we are ready to begin the upgrade. Before doing anything else, power off your 3D printer and unplug the power cable. We will start by removing the fan cover on our hot end. There are two screws holding the fan cover in place, one is on the top and the other is on the left side. If there are any zip ties around those hot end wires, use your flush cutter to remove the zip tie, and then it should be pretty easy to just take that entire fan housing and swing it over the back side of the X carriage plate, making it much easier to access the hot end. Next, remove the silicone sock, and using a 1.5mm Allen wrench, you'll need to loosen the set screw on the bottom side of the heater block. This is what's holding our heater cartridge in place. Then using a Phillips screwdriver, we need to remove the Phillips screw that is holding our thermistor inside of the heater block. With that out of the way, we should be able to grab the heater cartridge and slide out both the heater cartridge and the thermistor. Be very careful with the thermistor, it is quite fragile and my recommendation is to take the heater cartridge and thermistor and just throw them over the back side of the X carriage for now so that way they are out of the way. To remove the little blue retention clip, I find it easiest just to use either a flathead or if you have enough of a nail, you can just use your nail to pop that off and then push down on the PTFE compression fitting with one hand and use your other hand to pull the Bowden tubing out. The final step for our hot end is to use a 2mm Allen wrench to remove the two screws going through the heatsink into the X carriage. Once we've got those out of the way, the hot end will pop off and we can put that off to the side. We will not be reusing any of that. Turning our attention to the fan housing, we're going to be using both the layer cooling fan and the heatsink fan for the NG extruder. So we need to remove the four screws from both of these. Don't worry about keeping any of the screws. We're going to be using completely different screws when we install these onto the NG. We also don't need the fan housing or the fan shroud, just the fans hanging with the rest of the wire harness. The next step is to unhook the X-axis belt from the left and right side of the X carriage plate. You will want to loosen the two screws holding the X belt tensioner in place. That will just give you a lot more slack and make this a lot easier. And then you can simply grab both of the belt sides and pull it up and out away from that X carriage plate. Now that the X carriage is free, we are ready to remove the wheels. 
For this, you will need a 3mm Allen wrench as well as an 8mm spanner wrench for the nylon lock nut. The easiest way to do this is just to take the wrench and place it over the nylon lock nut with one hand, holding it in place, keeping it from spinning. Then with your other hand, use your Allen wrench to remove the screw. We don't need to keep the screws or the washers, but we are going to be reusing all of the roller wheels, so make sure that you put those somewhere safe. Once you've got all three wheels off, you can also put the back plate off to the side. We will not be using that as the NG is going to be replacing that. Now we can turn our attention to the extruder. Just like on the hot end, we'll start by removing the retention clip with our finger or a flathead, and then press down on the compression fitting so that way we can pull the Bowden tube out. Next, unplug the extruder cable, just leave that off to the side for now, and we are ready to remove all of the screws from this extruder. The easiest way I've found is to remove the tension screw first, followed by the lever arm, then the last three that actually bolt the stepper motor to the extruder mounting point. It doesn't really matter the order that you do these in, just make sure when you get down to the last one you've got a hand underneath the motor to keep it from falling off of the printer. Make sure you don't remove the bracket that the motor was mounted to. We're going to be using this for our reverse Bowden guide tube a little bit later on. Now we need to grab the main body of the NG extruder and to remove the pre-installed fan shroud. This is just held in place by two screws, one on the top right and one on the left hand side. At this point, I take a minute to appreciate both the machining of the aluminum body as well as the gearing. This entire extruder is going to be covered up with fans and we won't be able to see this really ever again, so I always take a moment and just kind of look it over. After that, grab the bag that has all the hardware that we're going to need to attach those roller wheels to the NG body. Inside of that bag, there is one long screw, two shorter screws that have Loctite already applied, an eccentric nut, a nylon lock nut, and a washer. The first screw that we install will be going into the bottom of the NG extruder, which is the only hole that doesn't have a standoff. For that, we need a roller wheel, the longest screw, the eccentric nut, the nylon lock nut, and the washer. Take that screw and place the roller wheel onto it, followed by the eccentric nut. Make sure that the long post is facing away from the wheel, and then feed that through the bottom of the NG body, minding the orientation. On the other side, we will drop the washer, followed by the nylon lock nut, which I recommend just getting started with your hand. Then, just like we did when we were removing it, take your wrench and hold the nylon lock nut in place while using your Allen wrench to tighten the screw. Next, grab the two screws with the Loctite as well as the last two roller wheels and load a wheel onto each of those screws. For this part, I'm standing behind the back of the Ender 5, so just mind your orientation. We'll take that main extruder body and place it over the X rail, and then we'll take those loaded screws with the wheels and we will tighten them into the threaded standoffs. I just threaded in a couple of turns and then grab the other wheel and do the same thing to make sure that I've at least got everything sort of lined up in place. I find it to be much easier this way. And then we can continue to fully seat those screws into the threaded standoffs. Even after tightening everything, there will likely be some play, as you can see here. This is perfectly normal and fairly expected. We need to take a 10 millimeter wrench and adjust the eccentric nut on the bottom side of the extruder. I found it easiest to wiggle the extruder while you are tightening the eccentric nut a fraction of a turn, and as soon as that wiggle is gone, you are good to go. You don't need to keep turning it, you don't want to force additional pressure on that wheel into the extrusion. We're going to be installing the same belt that we removed from the initial X carriage, just the exact same way. Take the left side and slip it over the notch on the left of the NG, and the right side of the belt and slip it over the right side. The little metal pieces will keep it from popping out. Next, we need to tighten the X belt tensioner. This is what we loosened earlier. I just use one hand to pull a little bit away, at, which generates some tension on the belt, and then tighten those two bolts in place. You don't need insane amounts of tension, just enough so that those belts aren't going to slip, and you're good to go. Next up, we are ready to install our new all-metal hot end. Grab the bag that has the hot end and remove the silicone sock. We're going to be installing heater cartridge and thermistor, so we need to have that silicone sock off for now. The hot end will be installed into the notch on the bottom side of the NG extruder, and we will need to loosen the set screw on the bottom of the NG body, so that way the heat break can slide in easily. 
As far as orientation, make sure the slit in the heater block is facing forwards towards the front of the printer. To install the hot end, simply slide the heat break into that slot on the bottom, and then with your other hand, tighten the set screw. I usually tighten it a little bit and then back off and make sure it's straight before I completely seat it. You just want to hand tighten it, you don't need to torque down on that set screw. Now we are ready to reinstall the heater cartridge and thermistor. Grab the wire harness and feed it over the top of the x-axis extrusion. The strategy here is going to be to slide the heater cartridge into the heater cartridge slot and the thermistor into the bottom thermistor slot in one fell swoop. Usually I can get them lined up pretty well, but if yours is being stubborn like mine was, I recommend just grabbing something like an Allen key and pressing the thermistor into its slot. We want to make sure that it is fully in the slot so that way we get accurate temperature readings. Then place the Phillips head screw in the hot end bag in the threaded hole above the thermistor. With this, I just take a screwdriver and I slowly turn it. The second I start to feel tension, I just stop. You do not want to damage those thermistor wires. You want it to be held in place, but do not pinch those wires or you can easily damage the thermistor. For the heater cartridge, having it flush with the heater block seems to be roughly center. This is much less fragile, so you don't need to worry nearly as much. And we will clamp down on the two set screws on the underside of the heater block. This will actually compress the block around the heater cartridge, which will keep it nice and secure. With those in place, we can grab that silicone sock and place it over the heater block. Now we are ready to install our fans, so we'll take the bag that has the eight plastic self-tapping screws and we will dump those out. The four larger screws will be used for our heatsink or hot end cooling fan, and the four smaller screws will be for the layer cooling fan. Take the included fan shroud and then take the heatsink fan and place that on the very front. Mind the orientation, and I highly recommend having the wire going out the top right just to help out with cable management, which we'll cover a little bit later on. Then attach the fan with the four larger self-tapping screws. Since we are threading into a printed part, make sure not to clamp these down. This is just a light fan and these screws will do a great job of holding it in place. Next, grab the layer cooling fan and that will slot into the right side of that fan housing or that fan shroud. It only goes in one direction, so you want the opening to go downwards. Then just like we did on the larger one, take the four smaller self-tapping screws and secure the fan in place. With both fans installed, we are ready to take this fan housing and place it over the NG extruder. I do my best to get all the wires sort of bundled up on the inside of the right side of that fan shroud. Then we will use the two screws that we previously removed from the fan shroud to reinstall this to the main NG body. Again, one will be on the top right and the other is on the left side. Now we are going to install the reverse Bowden, which will be our filament guide tube. For this, we'll take the bag that has the printed bracket with the two screws and the two nuts, and we're going to be installing this where our old extruder was. We'll take the two screws and we'll place them through the holes on the printed part, and then we will secure them in place using those two nuts on the back side of that aluminum bracket. Now we're going to be reinstalling our printer's Bowden tubing. Start by removing the retention clip on the printed part, and then push the Bowden tubing all the way into that compression fitting as far as it goes before seating that retention clip between the printed part and the compression fitting. Then install the other end of the Bowden tubing into the hot end and make sure you place a retention clip also there just to prevent anything from popping out. Now we are ready to install the included extruder extension cable. Make sure that you use the included cable. We'll take our old cable and we'll fit this into the female end of the extension cable. It'll only go in one direction because of the notches, so just make sure you line them up and press them into place. Then plug the other end into the stepper motor on the NG extruder. We are now ready for cable management. The reverse Bowden printed part has two notches on the side that are meant for zip ties, so we'll slide some zip ties through there, and then we will tie that around the old wire harness as well as the new extruder extension cable to keep them nice and snug. In addition to that, I used about four or five more zip ties to tie the Bowden tubing, the extruder extension cable, and the old wire harness together to just keep all the wires in one bunch versus having them sort of dangling in different directions. Make sure that you give the extruder motor some slack. I ended up just pressing it downwards and tightening it around the rest of the wires so that way if there is any pull, it's not going to be pulling the plug at the stepper motor. That is really important to prevent any possible damage. 
For standard rigid filaments, MicroSwiss recommends having a 1.75 millimeter gap or amount of threads showing from that tension screw. That's how mine came from factory and I imagine most will, but you can always grab a piece of filament and shove it in between there and adjust the screw if needed. If you have an Ender 5 Plus, there are two additional steps. You will need to move the x-axis end stop to the left and to attach the BL touch to the NG body. Printed parts for this are now included with every purchase and I will have links in the description over to the official documentation for additional reference. The last thing we need to do is update our e-steps value for this new extruder. MicroSwiss has made this really easy. They have a G-code file on their website that I'll have linked. You'll just need to go over there download that G-code file and then transfer it over to your printer's micro SD card and then plug that back into your printer. On the printer, navigate to your micro SD card and then look for that G-code file, the micro Swiss E-Steps, click on it and select print. It will take just a second or two and your E-Step value will be updated. In your slicer, make sure that you change your retraction distance from whatever it's at currently to one millimeters for the new extruder. MicroSwiss does not recommend going over 1.5 millimeters as a maximum extrusion distance with the NG extruder. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that your Ender 5 is up and running with the NG extruder, or you at least have a much better understanding of the process to upgrade. I highly recommend running a PID tune for the new hot end and extruder. It's a super simple process and I will have a link in the description over to some information on how you can do that. Also, most Creality printers are going to be firmware capped at 255 to 260 Celsius as the max temp the hot end can reach. If you do want to be able to print up to 300 Celsius with this new hot end and extruder setup, you're going to want to update the firmware with a new max temp. I'll also have a link in the description over to any resources that I think will be useful or helpful in order to help you with that if that's something you're going to want to do. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBod, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!